Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all manner of strange and unusual uh, literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, and I wanted to uh, talk about some pretty lovely poetry that I have encountered recently. Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Um, that poem was recommended to me uh, in the comments by uh, on, a, on a poem from last week uh, by uh, Red from Left on Red. Uh, she makes great uh, uh, videos about creepypastas. She does wonderful voiceover work. Uh, and unfortunately, I am unable to do uh, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. One, because it is a long poem. Uh, it's, it's in seven parts, and like I actually read it to myself uh, out loud just to see how it would go. And like it took me 20-ish or so minutes to read it. Uh, so, like, the, and I was stumbling over my words. So I think that in order to read it effectively, uh, and present it on the channel with analysis and whatnot, it would take longer than 30 plus minutes. And I simply, like, that's, that's too much time to monetize from people out there. Like, monetize? Too much time to monopolize. Sorry, that's the word from people out there. So, uh, uh, like, unfortunately, I cannot read it. Uh, despite the fact that it is a quality poem. Uh, and I will, but I will say, uh, one, you should absolutely go check out Red's video. I'll put, uh, um, uh, Red's, um, YouTube thing up here so that you can, you can find her and in the comments below. Uh, she is a quality person that I have the, the, the benefit of knowing personally. Uh, and uh, so also in addition to that, I'll also put the poem in the comments below just because it's a wonderful poem and even though it's like seven parts long, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Like I, I like that, uh, that the way it describes this terrible like sea storm that, that like just ruins the ship. Uh, and, and ruins the the crew who's traveling on a ship. But I also think it's funny how the story is told because it's it's sort of told for in like a flashback because a uh, uh, an old sailor stops the uh, stops a wedding goer and is like, hey, let me tell you uh, about this story of of uh, this terrible storm that destroyed the ship I was on. And the wedding goer is like, uh, I have I have somewhere to be, and then he just he just goes on. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a pretty cool poem and I'll put a, um, link to it below so that, um, you may all, uh, experience it for yourselves. But now to the, to the main poem at hand. Uh, I want to talk about a poem that, that, uh, touches upon race, racism, and prejudice, uh, um, which are all weird topics because can you imagine being racist? That is very weird. Uh, but also this is an excuse to elevate black voices again, uh, an excuse to, uh, talk about one of my, one of my favorite poets from one of my favorite schools, the Harlem Renaissance, uh, where you had a whole bunch of, um, pretty excellent poets, like, showing off their skills and, uh, uh, really getting at issues of their experience in America and how it wasn't it wasn't equitable in, uh, especially in the 1930s, and it still, it still rings true to today. So I wanted to talk about I Too by Langston Hughes. Um, so yeah, a chance to elevate black voices, especially as uh, the protests across America continue in the wake of police brutality and, and unjust treatment uh, to black Americans everywhere. Um, and they still haven't arrested the people who, uh, the, the police officers who, who murdered Breonna Taylor, which, um, is something that still kind of pangs me as well. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to, uh, read and discuss I Too by Langston Hughes. I too sing, America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen, then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, 
M. America. So that was I Too uh, by Langston Hughes, uh, a pretty interesting poem uh, that really gets at um, um, racism and prejudice in our segregated society uh, in the 1930s, but we still have that today. Um, and in, in, in using an interesting metaphor, like he uses a, a, a seat at the table as a way of, of illustrating how um, uh, black Americans aren't on the same level as uh, the rest the rest of the people in America. Um, uh, a, a good way to illustrate that is they they send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. So like um, those who are in power, those who have control, who who eat at the table, are like we we do not want uh, this person, this individual, these black people to be seen at the table uh, with us. We do not want them to be on to be seen as equal but also just they we don't want them to be equal um so that's that's how um he illustrates it in the beginning uh but he also uses the uh the seat at the table again uh in the next verse he says tomorrow i'll be at the table when company comes nobody will dare say to me eat in the kitchen then and uh, that's after he says and grow strong. So like he'll develop the skills and resources and, and the bonds and the connections in the community that he needs in order to be able to reject any attempts to, to hold him back or prevent him from taking his rightful place in America. Uh, Langston Hughes was an extremely talented individual uh, who um, I'm uh, had a decent college education, uh, and college education shouldn't be what prevents you from having a seat at the table. Uh, but like he, he had credentials, but because he was a black American, like he was still held back in a lot of ways. Uh, and so by gathering those connections and forming a, a stronger bond within your community, uh, and basically finding ways to resist, uh, that prejudice, um, he'll be able to have a seat at the table. When someone says no, he'll be like, no, this is going to happen. Um, it's also interesting how he says uh, at the very end, besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. Uh, and I think that's the, the the power of guilt right there. Uh, how it, like, it, eventually it'll, it'll make everybody ashamed of their racism, racism, especially as society progresses. But I don't think shame really works for everyone. Like, I think that's one of the flaws with this poem. Um... Uh, because no matter how excellent a black person performs a per, or a person of color performs, uh, like there, there still be that racism and some people can't be made to feel ashamed. They can't, uh, uh, be made to feel, uh, like their racism was, was wrong. And so I think that might be one of the few areas where, um, Langston Hughes gets it wrong. Uh, but, uh, I still think it's it's an incredibly powerful like notion to hold, like that you will be so great and you will be so beautiful and and so uh, like in a, in a much better place that they they won't be able to to tell you no and like not only that but they'll they'll feel bad about how they've acted in the past and uh, you know uh, I do think that there is um, we do tend to look back on like the racism of the past and feel some sense of shame. Um, even if it doesn't stop people from, you know, committing further acts of racism at times. Uh, so overall, I think this is a wonderful poem uh, from a man who writes tons of beautiful poetry. Uh, and I, I, I really get what Langston Hughes is trying to say. Like, you may reject me now, but one day uh, you will have no choice but to accept me, to accept people who are like me. Um, and so I... Um, I really wanted to illustrate this poem because it, it spoke to me when I uh, when I was reading it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I feel like we should all go out and read more Harlem Renaissance poetry, or and not just that, but also poetry from Africa, which I feel like isn't isn't highlighted enough. Poetry from slaves before uh, they were freed, um, all all important to consider and and um, reflect on as we are in this this cultural moment right here. Um, uh, uh, I'll put a link to the poem in the description so that you can find it and that we may we may discuss it. It's always fun to uh, 
um, discuss poetry um, and, and talk about racial issues um, so that we may improve America um, as much as we possibly can. Um, in the meantime, uh, again, don't forget to leave a comment, uh, like, share, and subscribe uh, so that we can um, get this poets, poetry, uh, poetry Thursday thing out there. Um, and in the meantime, I wish you the, plus, uh, the best of times in your weird travels and your social justice travels. Farewell.